Hey guys, welcome to another episode of iOS versus Android development. Today we'll look at the differences of how to code up a table view versus a recycler view, uh, both of which allow you to show a scrollable list of data quickly and efficiently in your app. We'll start off with a table view in iOS, and the first thing you're going to need is to have UIKit imported, so table view is included in that. Next we'll add a table view to our storyboard, get it all set up just right. Um, we'll add a prototype cell and name it cell in the reuse identifier. Then we'll create an IB outlet um, and connect our table view to our view controller. We'll make our view controller the data source and delegate for our table view. And you can do that in uh, view did load as well with code. And you can see we're going to get an error because we need to have our view controller inherit from UI table view data source and UI table view delegate. But in order to inherit from those two classes, two methods are required number of rows in section and the cell for row at index path. That's what's going to tell the view controller how many rows are in the table view and what to put in each row. And if we add the did select row at index path method, we're able to respond to selections of individual rows. So we'll have the city that's selected printed um, once we select it. So when we run it, you can see that um, it displays the list of cities. And when you select one, It'll print New York City clicked, Phoenix clicked, and San Jose clicked. Pretty easy. So how can we do the same thing in Android? Well, we need to add a recycler view dependency in our build.gradle file and then sync that up. Next, we'll navigate to our activity main XML layout file and add a recycler view. We'll make its height and width match parent, and then we'll give it an ID to be referenced later. So I'll just call it my recycler view. Then we'll head over to our main activity class and declare a variable of type recycler view and then to that variable we'll assign the recycler view from our layout file. And right now we'll also take care of adding a linear layout manager to be used later. Next we'll configure the layout for a row of our recycler view in a separate XML layout file. We'll make the height and width wrap content and we'll also give it an ID, I'll call it recycler view item, give it some style and padding. And we also need to add a view that serves as the space in between rows. Next, we'll head over to an adapter class for our recycler view. We'll make it extend recycler view adapter. And this adapter class is responsible for providing the number of items that are in the recycler view, uh, for configuring the view holders that will serve as rows, and for binding data to each row. So now we're creating an adapter view holder class that will contain a text view that uses the layout that we created earlier for a recycler view item. So now that we have that, we can specify what to do once a view holder is created. And that involves inflating a view, placing it in a new adapter view holder, and then returning that adapter view holder. Next, we want to bind data to each individual view holder. Um, so to get the list of cities, um, all we have to do is get the position of the view holder and then make that correspond with the position of the city in our array from the top of the class. So as it stands right now, our recycler view will not respond to clicks. So we actually need to add that functionality using an interface and an adapter onclick handler. We'll set an onclick listener in our adapter view holder class. We'll override the view holder's onclick method so that we can have access to the city that was clicked later on. We'll head back over to our main activity class and set up a few things for our recycler view um, and add an adapter variable and then set the adapter for our recycler view to the one we were just working on. And now since we've implemented the adapter onclick handler, we can uh, override our onclick method and make it respond to clicks. So if we run it, you can see that the list of cities is displayed and that it will respond to clicks. So if we were to click on Los Angeles, you'd see Los Angeles clicked. And we pretty much have a working and responsive recycler view. So which one's better? Well, considering that you can accomplish pretty much the same things with each of them, uh, it really comes down to how easy are each of them to implement. And I think it's pretty clear that iOS is much easier to implement. Um, you don't have to worry about an adapter or a click handler. I'm pretty sure that's just a matter of Apple abstracting much of that code away. But as a developer, I greatly appreciate that. Thanks for watching this edition, and I hope to see you next time.